This video is continuing right where the previous video left off. We're still in part 060, logic and control, and we're gonna wrap up that document with a little bit of more information about if and else if. So it is totally possible and also perfectly normal to nest if statements or other control structures inside of each other. So here I've got a very simple little example, a very contrived example. I've got two variables, sun and rain, and the idea is that five is sort of a cutoff between a lot of sun or rain and not a lot of sun or rain. So I'm gonna say if the amount of sun is greater than five, then we'll check on the rain. And this code is indented. It's inside a block grouped by the if right here. So if this condition is true, we will run this code. If this condition is false, we will skip all of this code and go down here and run the code inside of the else block. What's different from what I've shown before in other videos is that we then have another if else inside that grouping of code, but that's a perfectly fine and normal thing to do. Okay, so if the sun value is high, we're gonna check is the rain value also high? And if it is, well, then there might be a rainbow. Otherwise, we're gonna display sunscreen. Now. Pro tip, you should still wear sunscreen even if it's cloudy because you can still get sunburned through clouds. But for this program, we're just trying to do some kind of simple example that people are gonna understand. All right, so then we run if rain greater than five. All right, so if sun is not greater than five, then we go down to the else. We do still check the rain value. Is it high? Well, if there's not much sun and the rain value is high, I mean, it may not be cold. It could be a warm rain, but we're gonna say it's cold. Otherwise, it may just be gray because it's not sunny, but it's not rainy either. So it must be kind of some cloud cover or something like that. And with the values that I have, I get sunscreen here. But if I change the rain to something higher and rerun it, I might get a rainbow or I could make the sun lower and get cold or gray. I can get all the combinations. And again, this is useful. This is a good thing to know, but there's actually an alternative. And the alternative is right here. So I could just say, well, if it's sunny, and it's rainy, then display rainbow. Else if, check if it's sunny and rainy, and not rainy, excuse me, then display sunscreen. Now our conditions are a little bit more complicated. I need to use and, and the warnings here are suggesting that I should use double ampersand, but I'm gonna keep it simple and just use the single. And also I need to check like rain less than or equal to five, for example. I don't need a condition down here for the else, because I've already checked all the other conditions. So the only thing left over is that there must be not much sun, but also not much rain. And I can run this section and I'll get similar results depending on the values of sun and rain. And you can experiment more with that yourself if you would like. And lastly, for this relatively short video, I have uh, an exercise or a question or something from MATLAB for Engineers, fifth edition. And the book question asks us to write a function that's going to return true or false whether or not a particular part meets certain specifications. And the specifications are that the part needs to be 5.4 centimeters long, plus or minus 0.1 centimeters. And also, the function should throw an error if a negative value is entered. Continuing on down. So here's how we call our function. I've already written the function, I'll show you the code momentarily. We're gonna get from user input, what is the measurement here, and then if, and then I just call the function. You can call a function right after the word if. The only requirement of the code on the same line as the if or of an else if is that it be true or false, that it be zero or one, or a vector of zeros or ones. And we're gonna set up this function within specification to make sure it returns a result of zero or one. And then the function itself, we're gonna pass to it the value that was typed in from the user, the measurement here. And if it's true that it's within specifications, we'll display all good. Otherwise, we'll display that there is a problem. So let's just run it to test it out. What is the measurement? I'll give the precise 5.4. It's all good. Run it again. What if it's 5.41? That's still all good. That's within specification. But what if I do 5.7? Nope, that's a problem. It's out of specification. What if I run it and put something ridiculous in like negative three? Error. This is a custom error message. I generated this. It's not a problem that occurred in MATLAB. I mean, it kind of is, but it's a problem because I created specific code to say, MATLAB, I want you to interrupt the running of the program. And I'll show you how to do that right now. Let's open up within specifications. Link to all this code, including this function, are within the video description. 
all functions are going to start with the word function, followed by, I like to always use the brackets, although they are optional in this particular case. And then in those brackets, what is going to be the variable holding the return value, the value that's given as a result from the function. I named mine in specs and then equals the function name and then parentheses for the variable or variables that are going to hold inputs to the function. This one only takes one, so I only have one thing in the parentheses. And then I have if, else if, and else inside the function, which is a perfectly normal thing to do. You can, any code you put in a regular MATLAB file, you could put in a function, as long as you set up the variables and inputs and outputs around it correctly. So if the measurement is less than zero, I run the error function. This is a built-in MATLAB function, works in uh, Octave as well. And I throw that error up on the screen. It interrupts the running of the code and it displays out exactly this text that I asked it to display out. There it is right there. And then goes ahead and tells me what line of code did it occur on in the program that called the function. So that line 767 right there, right? It was called on line 767 right there. All right, now if the measurement is not less than zero, then we'll go check this condition. Is the measurement between 5.3 and 5.5? I don't think the question specified whether or not it was inclusive, so I just made mine exclusive. If so, in specs equals one, it's true. Otherwise, in specs equals zero, it's not true. By the way, I could interrupt the function at this point by calling return. Just that word all by itself is basically a way of saying I am done with this function, don't run any further code, and I would want to do the same thing probably right down here. Now, I don't need to because there's no further code after this end of the if, but that is something that you can add in. All right, so that was just a little bit of extra stuff you can do with ifs and else ifs and else, and also the error function as well. And that's all for this video. Next video is going to move right along to the uh, next folder, and we're going to be talking about repetition control structures, better known as loops.